Hi, my name is Andrea Samudis, and I'm going to be presenting my chapter from the book The Art and Science of Compassionate Care, namely Cultivating Compassion in the New Generation. This is an, a cooperation between the International Institute of Compassionate Care and Springer with their series New Paradigms in Healthcare. So in the first section, when we were presenting the book, I talked about why, what is compassion, what is compassion, and why it's important. Now, if we're going to cultivate it to people, we have to ask ourselves the following question. Is, can compassion actually be taught? And again, this dates back to the ancient philosophers. This is something that um, troubled them as well. So, for example, Socrates used to, used to argue that values such as compassion are innate. They're a gift of the gods. Whereas Protagoras used to argue that we all teach, uh, we all teach values. And then if I fast forward to more current uh, philosophers and academics, George Pence wrote a beautiful essay on this, Can Compassion Be Told? I'll link it in the description. It's worth a read. And then other academics, through, through, through going through the literature and their own teaching experience, they all reach a consensus. And the consensus is that, yes, compassion can be developed and eroded. So it can be cultivated and eroded. And I, I do want to get into some of, the, some of the factors that erode compassion and some of the factors that cultivated from the chapter. I'm going to include some of them here only. So the first thing that erodes compassion is the healthcare professional training in itself. If healthcare professional training, the science is not coupled with the cultivation of virtues, this produced a phenomenon called the hardening, the hardening of the heart. And later, when students go into the clinical practice, because these values, the, because these values are not promoted, they are rather a luxury rather than a priority. And this is pretty evident from studies that show clinicians who prioritize technical skills over intrinsic values. And because of this, we have situations such as the UK Francis report, which actually, this was a report into the failings of one of the UK, into the serious failings of one of the UK hospital trusts. And one of the reasons they found was lack of compassion. And they actually, they actually promoted uh, metrics in order to measure compassion. We'll talk about this in a bit. Then you also have the absence of role models. We are creatures that mimic. In order for me to perform, to, to do behavior, I have to see someone else do it. And that person has to inspire me as well. And because we don't, there is an absence of role models because these, because these values such as compassion are not promoted. And this speaks to another, to another thing that we talk about in, in the chapter, which is creating a culture change. Pretty difficult thing to do. And then we also have an unmet need. Another barrier is the unmet need for validated metrics. Uh, validated psychometric analysis tools that measure compassionate care. Although at its infancy, this field, there is some, it is flourishing. So one of the best tools out there right now following systematic review is the Sinclair Compassionate Questionnaire. I don't know if it's a systematic or a meta-analysis. I have to check back on you with that. But I'll have it, I have it in the description here, all the references, you can see them. And then the things that cultivate compassion, one of the things is environment. So there's, there's quite a lot of papers that show that manifestations of nature, so just pictures of trees, windows, looking outside, they can actually decrease anxiety and depression. They can increase the pain tolerance of, of patients, and they also decrease the length of stay in hospital. It's brilliant. Um, and it just comes to show how much your environment plays a role on your behavior. So this is one thing that promotes compassion. The second thing is starting early. Now, Will Durant famously said that values are habits repeated over time. So the earlier you start with a, with a habit, and you, the more you cultivate, the more you cultivate it, uh, and the bigger the change that happens. So starting early is key. And the second thing is humanities and arts. There's a lot of intellectuals and a lot of academics and, um, and clinicians that promote humanities and arts in healthcare professional education. Why? Why do they do this? Because it enables, it enables, it enables us to visualize and better understand the lives of others. And I think this is a very important point. Now, moving to the next slide. 
Here we have C.S. Lewis. Um, he famously said that education without values, as useful as it is, seems rather to make a man a more clever devil. So this basically means that if we can't just teach skills, we have to teach skills alongside virtues. We have to cultivate virtues alongside skills. There are two that go hand in hand. And we identify some of these in the chapter and we talk about them. So some of the virtues we have here are empathy, trust, honesty, humility, love, forgiveness, kindness, mindfulness, and then some of the skills, active listening, conflict transformation, advanced intercultural communication, adversity activated development, and a few more. And then this, we also present the following framework on teaching compassion care, the 3C firm framework. In the book, we use medical students as an example, but this can be applied to any other healthcare professional training. Let's start with the first C. The first C is cultivate. So cultivating compassionate care. In order to cultivate the three ways. So these are the three ways of teaching actually. Didactic, practical, and experiential. Didactic way is the traditional way of teaching. You're in a lecture theater, you listen to a lecture, you've got case-based learning, uh, problem-based learning, and, um, and then, and also cinema education, pretty nice one. Um, and then you also got practical teaching. Practical teaching is the hands-on experience of learning. This is the type of learning, uh, some examples of this type of learning is role-playing or the flipped classroom. Swartz round, for example, another uh, significant way of teaching. Now, these first two ways, didactic and practical, are very good at teaching skills. And I think we're actually pretty good at doing this um, in most universities. But then what happens is, I've, we've found that we're lacking in the teaching, in the cultivation of values. And this is where the third, the third way of teaching comes in, which is the experiential learning. And experiential learning includes methods uh, such as narrative medicine, patient journeys, and placements with role model clinicians, which are highlighted and promoted and celebrated by institutions. And one way for ex to give an example that we can cultivate uh, compassion in medical students is we can have medical students teach about compassionate care as part of the, their student selected components in local, in local schools. And it's actually been shown that these types of teaching sessions can actually, on compassionate care, can actually decrease physical and verbal aggression in students, in high school students, which is pretty remarkable. So it's a win-win situation. And then you also have the second C, which is check. So we're going to check if the, the change that we've applied is actually working. And how do we check this? We check this with validated me metrics and we could do this starting even before students come to university. So with prospective medical students going into, uh, trying to get into universities at the MMI interview, at the mini multiple uh, interviews, we can have a station where they have to show compassion. And this can be, this can be tested with the Sinclair uh, compassionate questionnaire or, um, and there's other also, ways in order to check compassion, you can find them in the chapter. And what happens is it becomes something that the student has to work on before they come. And it also increases its value. The other thing we can do is test this in OSCE at medical schools and then at re-evaluation, part of the re-evaluation re procedure for doctor, juniors and seniors. And then the third C is conserve. So cultivate, check and conserve. Now conserve, it's imperative for this system to work because it ensures continuity. It spans, it starts spanning, it starts from high school students and it moves on indefinitely. And that's the 3C framework. Here we have a table from, taken from the book which talks about all these different methods, a bit more detail, and, the, and then when they can be used. So prospective medical students, medical students, junior doctors, and senior doctors. These are some practical recommendations. In each chapter we have this, at the end of the chapter, we have the practical recommendations. And this is for this chapter. We've talked about some of these. You can find more in the chapter. And these are some features. We have worked examples of teaching methods in, with including real patient scenarios. 
when we talk about, we give an example of a hybrid modular overarching theme, which can be delivered in medical students, medical schools, and in healthcare teaching overall. It's been found that there's qualitative and quantitative evidence to suggest that this is one of the best ways to cultivate compassion. Um, and this is from research that has happened in the UK, in Greece, and in Cyprus. So it's, it's, it's worth looking at. And this brings us to the conclusion. So one thing I want you to take from today is developing compassion is of utmost importance. The second thing is the 3C model, cultivate, check and conserve. And the aim of this chapter and of this book is that it can be used as guidelines when making healthcare educational reforms. And I'll leave you with one last quote. Um, if you talk to a man, this is by Nelson Mandela. If you talk to a man in a language that he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. And I hope we can use this not only for our patients, but for our colleagues, for our family, for our friends, and such create a community and create a community such as the painting I've put here it's by George Surratt it's from the 19th century. Because, yeah, that's the most beautiful thing about the human experience. Thank you for listening. Here you can find Simponis.org. You can find a lot of material for teaching, mentioned in the chapter, and the references you can find on andreasamis.com. Thank you so much. You can find the links for the book uh, in the description. And um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. I'm sure you will enjoy all the other presentations that are coming up by all the other amazing team members that we've had. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been an amazing experience.